Greetings Trarians, Chaos here. Today I want to give some build tips for something that I think is important in every Terraria build, even if it's not absolutely necessary. That would be foundations. It is said that you cannot build a great building on a weak foundation. And while that doesn't necessarily apply to the laws of gravity within Terraria, I do think it's an important concept to keep in mind. For example, we have a house that I built here with no foundation. It's just sitting on the dirt. It looks nice, but if we look right next to it at an identical house with a foundation, it just kind of feels more rooted into the earth. It feels more, uh, I guess, sound and like it belongs and like it's a permanent feature and it's not just kind of sitting out there. And that's kind of what I'm talking about with foundations and that's what we'll be covering first. So if we use this dynasty wood as the floor of what would be our house, of course it can just sit on the dirt flat like this. There's no problem with that. But I do tend to use two different kinds of foundations beneath it to just kind of make it look like that the building is more a part of the ground below it because uh, when you think of architecture, they do have foundations underneath the ground. Again, not necessary for Terraria, but I think it's a nice touch. So the two types of foundations that I build are kind of... Uh, an inset foundation and that's where if I just like dig uh, segments of holes beneath the uh, ground level of whatever build I'm gonna have just like this and I fill this in with uh, any kind any kind of block uh, for foundations I tend to like to use things um, stone-esque uh, I'll use mudstone quite a bit and I tend to paint it gray but if you want to leave it unpainted it actually blends in a bit with the dirt a little bit better so that's up to you uh, you'll see that it kind of shapes itself a little better if you paint it it's got that hard edge but uh, I also use Titan stone uh, different kinds of bricks you can use anything that you want for your foundation I do recommend that it's not just flat all the way across I kind of like the way it looks if it's uneven and kind of lumpy like this but this is what I I kind of think of as an inset foundation it's uh, just tiles set onto the dirt that I dug in uh, beneath where I'm gonna have my floor the next kind of foundation that I tend to build is something that I kind of think of as like a, a false foundation so if I were to have my house floor again just like this I'll just make it a little bit bigger here there we go so this will be the first floor of whatever house I was to build I'm gonna do something similar to what I have here but this just pops out to the eye a little bit more so I'm going to start by kind of digging underneath the floor a layer just like that. And I'm going to try and shape this in a as natural a way as I possibly can. So just make it look like it's part of the rolling hill. Um, just maybe delete those right there. And then I'm actually going to shape these dirt blocks here with the hammer and I can just remove the natural dirt wall here I don't need it and using the staff of regrowth I'm just going to spread the uh, grass to these newly covered dirt blocks just like this maybe just a couple of blocks here to make it look a little more natural now what we're gonna do next is actually take uh, a, a block wall that 
we want to see as our foundation. I'm going to just go ahead and use the mudstone as an example again. So I'm going to have my mudstone brick wall and I'm going to actually use uh, white paint. And the reason for that is because I want it to look similar uh, to gray painted mudstone brick. So here we have mudstone brick painted gray. You'll see that if I use white paint on mudstone brick wall, they're pretty much the exact same color. And that's uh, the look that I'm after for this uh, current design. So I'm going to take this wall and I'm actually going to just place it as my foundation. So you can see this is kind of why I call it a false foundation. There aren't actually any tiles in here. It's all walls. But it allows us to keep grass and uh, plants and what have you underneath the house, which is just, it just looks amazing to me. And you could also do a few other different design things with it. So something to keep in mind, if you want grass in this foundation area, you need to let it grow before you place the walls. Uh, like this blade of grass is here now because it grew here naturally, but grass won't actually grow in front of the walls. But another thing that you could do to kind of just uh, make the build look a little better for the foundation is take some strange plants. I prefer these purple and green ones with some lime dye and just kind of place them around underneath a little bit. You could also do something like uh, grab some leaf wand and maybe you could make a little bit of uh, shrubbery. Uh, there's a bunch of different things that you could do. There are also two types of kind of special condition foundations that I like to use. And one is where it's uh, a building that's raised or on stilts. Um, I've done this a few times, particularly with the jungle build in Super Terraria World. So if we just have the floor that we want and say I want it to be about yay high, then all we really need to do is just place blocks underneath it. Um, you can use anything you like. Uh, I personally like to use woods for this kind of thing. Uh, Dynasty wood is good. Uh, living wood wand is also good. But you'll need to grab uh, actuators if you plan on walking beneath the build. Otherwise, what's the point of it being raised? You're the builder, you decide. But if you just grab your actuators and just place some pillars going down then we have the uh the foundation kind of going for us already um i like to also have a brick looking segment beneath it so i'll probably switch to some uh mudstone brick maybe and just place some of them down like this uh we could press or push those actuators into the background so we can walk beneath. And I'll just go ahead and get rid of them real quick. And really that's all you need for the foundation. Uh, personally, I like to have things a little more supporting uh, in appearance. So um, to make things look a little bit thicker, like the floor here, maybe I'll grab some uh, let's see, rich mahogany wall and just place it back here like this, which will make the floor look a little bit thicker than it is, uh, particularly on the underside, because when we build the house, you won't actually see this bit up here uh, once we place other walls over it. Another thing that you might do is to place walls behind the pillars to make them appear a bit thicker. Uh, a good wall for that is actually shade wood. So just grab your shade wood and just, uh, I prefer to paint it brown and then place it behind these just like this. Now it kind of changes the way that the mudstone looks. Um, you might not be into that. It's up to you. You could just have them go straight into the ground. You don't need the mudstone at all. 
or you could kind of uh, combine the techniques that I did with the uh, the false or inlaid foundations previously and you could just place your uh, segments of the foundation directly underneath the uh, wooden pillars just like this and they don't need actuators I'm just going to have them sitting right on top like that if you want it to look a little bit cleaner under here you could get rid of these like this and just kind of have a combination of the two foundation styles so if I were to uh, well, let me just actuate these blocks get rid of this so I have the physical block here but if I were to just place a little bit of dirt there there maybe just one here I will do two and then shape them a little bit not too much just so they're not actually connecting to the stone beneath them and then we grab some white paint and the mudstone brick wall again and just fill it in you'll see that we kind of get the inlaid and false foundation underneath right down here and then we could just uh, grab the staff of regrowth and just throw down some grass to make it look a little bit nicer and there we have it we have uh, a stilt foundation that's relatively thick it looks sturdy uh, you can give it some cross beams if you want with uh, I like to use living wood wand you could just kind of do something like this and uh, shape it and these uh, cross support beams might make it look like your house is a little bit sturdy I know that Terraria is not realistic obviously the gravity the physics of it everything about Terraria is not set in realism however I think if you bring some realistic aspects to your builds you could really enhance the way that they look uh, so that's why I recommend doing uh, details like this to your builds uh, just kind of gives them a more realistic look you, you might not want diagonal cross beams you might want a flat one I could put a flat cross beam just like this uh, I obviously want to paint it so the wood matches and just push that into the background there's so many things you could do just get creative experiment around see what you like but don't be afraid to give things a more realistic look and make it seem like they actually can support themselves in real life so the other foundation um, that I do uh, it's, it's I guess you can't really call it a foundation but it is kind of the building layer of uh, my floating kind of houses I don't know if you've seen like the pontoon fishing uh, build that I did years ago on Terraria community forums but um, I like to have my floating builds kind of look like they're actually floating so what I could do is just have a build sitting on top of water just like this and this is what I see uh, maybe not most but a lot of players do and then maybe they'll just have thin beams going into the water which is perfectly fine that's the point of stilt houses right but if your ocean is really deep those super long pillars just don't look quite right to me so I like to make it look like they're kind of bobbing on the water the house is bobbing on the water it's floating so I'll just grab the floor and using the technique that I did last time with the rich mahogany I'm just going to place that there to make the floor look a little bit thicker so it connects beneath it and what I'm gonna do is grab these ebon wood bathtubs because you'll notice that they kind of look like giant kegs or barrels especially when you paint them brown 
So I'm gonna grab those and I'm gonna grab brass shelves because they're really, really, really thin. Uh, they could be quite hard to see. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place the brass shelves in the water and then place these barrels on top of them. And you'll see that you can build uh, right over these barrels. I call them barrels, but they're bathtubs. But you know what I mean. You can see that it'll actually connect with the block below it. So all I need to do is just build one, two, and then a little too high there, three down, and then build enough space for the bathtub. And then I could just place one right on top. And here we already have it look like it's just floating on the water. So I'm going to do that probably two more times and just give this a couple of floating barrel supports. So it already looks pretty good, just like that. However, these uh, platforms, they kind of stick out. They're pretty obvious. Uh, you could try to experiment with them with paints and see if you could find an option where they're not so apparent. Um, I don't have too many paints with me, so I'm not really gonna go into that. But what I am gonna talk about is what you can do with a hammer to kind of try and hide them. So the way that these work, the bathtub requires the platform to be under it for it to uh, kind of remain there. But you can actually shape these things in different ways to kind of try and hide them from view. So uh, be careful with the graphical error. If you do a flat uh, segment next to slope segments, it'll actually hide the water. But you can kind of just experiment around with these and see if you could find different ways to hide the platforms from view. You could also try experimenting with different platforms. This is just the platform that I tend to use. Additionally, you could try to do something a bit different um, with living leaf walls. I don't really paint them, though if you were to paint them, I'd recommend some lime. And you could just place these underneath and around the barrels. Not only does it make it look like your pontoon is kind of picking up seaweed as it goes, but it does kind of help to hide those platforms, especially if you were to then paint them in a fashion where it kind of blends in with the uh, the leaf that you're placing. I don't actually have any deep green, so actually I'll just grab some real quick and give you a look. Or you could try painting them black. Uh, you could try painting them gray. Whatever you think works. Or you could just leave them. You don't need to paint them at all. It's entirely up to you. But this is the kind of uh, makeshift foundation that I like to use for floating uh, houses, just because I don't just like having super long beams into the water. That covers everything that I wanted to talk about today regarding foundations in Terraria. I hope you guys uh, found it useful. I hope you guys consider building more foundations for yourself in your houses. I think it really helps to just make the buildings pop. If you did like the video, please be sure to leave me a comment or a like. I really do appreciate it. And consider subscribing to my channel for more content. Thank you very much for watching. Happy building.